Clayton Kershaw is throwing at hitters again. The LA Times tries and fails to preview the Lakers offseason. And we at least have a clue as to what USC basketball gained in the transfer portal. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is June 2nd, 2024, and the rent is too damn high, even in the sanctum sanctorum of LA sports. But on the plus side, we did add a new subscriber to the Angelino Familia. Thank you for getting in on the ground floor. We're gonna do our best to keep you informed. It's also Sunday, the Lord's Day. And if you believe in God as I do, take a moment. Thank him for the blessings in your life, like LA sports. And if you like being in the know about LA, click the clack the like button. Click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that, it'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist, and by all means, comment. Now, before we go through the news and notes, we'll look at the scoreboard. Dodgers four, Colorado one. Yoshinobu Yamamoto improves to six and two with a quality start. Evan Phillips gets a save in his return from the injured list, and Andy Pajes scores twice. Ricky Pooj scored a goal in a game the Galaxy had no business in losing, but they did. 2-1 to, to Chicago Fire, one of the bottom feeders of the Eastern Conference. There is a rapid recap of that match. If you want more notes on it, check out the Galaxy playlist on this channel. LAFC has recorded five consecutive shutouts in a 1-0 victory over FC Dallas. Seven consecutive wins in all competitions. Dennis Buanga scored the game winner. Meanwhile, today, Colorado is at the Dodgers at one. Gavin Stone for LA, he's five and two with a 3.16 ERA. Austin Gomber, one and two, 2.76 ERA. And the Sparks are at Phoenix at three. What do you say we, uh, what do you say we get to the news? Clayton Kershaw pitched to six batters off of a mound on Saturday, a faux inning, if you will. He'll have another such outing of pitching before leaving on a rehab assignment. Now there's even a timetable for his return, four to six weeks. So now we're talking early July, maybe the all-star break. And it does seem like it's been a while since he's pitched because it has. And let's be real, Dodgers have a lot of pitchers on the injured list. Unlike 90% of the Dodger staff though, this is not Tommy John surgery. Otherwise he'd be out even longer. It's a shoulder procedure. Andy Pajes says that pitchers have adjusted to him since his hot debut in the major leagues. But what's really frustrated to him is they've been, quote, pitching me in zones that I usually do pretty well in, unquote. He said those zones are middle in and middle down. Quote, those are pitches usually in my wheelhouse, but I'm missing those pitches. And when they're making mistakes in those zones, I should be able to hit those mistakes. I'm not right now, unquote. Dave Roberts told the LA Daily News that he's happy Pajes is keeping his composure as a rookie, but, quote, at some point, you've got to cover the strike zone, unquote. No kidding, because as we've been talking about for weeks, one through five, monsters in that lineup for the Dodgers. Six through nine, Smurfs. I mean, name your small woodland nymph that's what we're talking about with six through nine. They need anybody who could provide any offense down there. Daryl Strawberry's number was retired by the New York Mets, which is always something that should tug at the heartstrings. Even if you are a soulless, feral, dead on the inside, foul odored New Yorker, it should still tug at what allegedly are your heartstrings. But the press, specifically the Belcher report, simply couldn't leave well enough alone. They couldn't do it, nope. The Belcher report reported, incorrectly I might add, Strawberry said leaving the Mets for the Dodgers back in the 1990 offseason was, quote, the biggest regret, unquote, of his career. And I was really ready to tee up Strawberry for that one. Because let's be real, there's a lot of things that he should regret more 
than having left New York to come to LA, right? All you have to do is Google a little bit. You'll be like, yeah, stop it, dude. You should be regretting a lot more than that. But here's the point. He never said anything about Los Angeles or the Dodgers, not one syllable. He simply said in retrospect that he shouldn't have left the Mets. It didn't matter whether or not it was the Dodgers, the Seattle Mariners, the Minnesota Twins, Houston, whatever. He just wanted to stay a Met. And there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. Delino DeShields probably regrets being traded from Montreal to the Dodgers for Pedro Martinez. He was solid with, with the Expos. There are many examples of players who were better before coming to LA. And that's just life. But it's another thing entirely, and I might add craptacular journalism to add the Dodgers when Strawberry didn't say that. He could have left, like I said, he could have left the Florida Marlins. Would have felt the same way. So, craptacular journalism on behalf of the Belcher Report. And speaking of below average journalism, what do you say we take a look at the LA Times? And no, I'm not talking about Bill Plasky and his latest tear-drenched screed on God knows what. No, the LA Times finally took a swing on what the Lakers might do in the offseason. And the writer, Dan Wolke, he's pretty much hit and miss with his opinion pieces. And this was a miss, absolutely. He started by saying, you know what? We're not gonna talk about guards because the Lakers are set. First of all, that's not true. If D'Angelo Russell leaves, you're left with either Gabe Vincent, who played just 11 games last year, or Spencer Dinwiddie as a starter. That's not solid. That's not at all solid. Then the writer goes through about a dozen names of forwards and backup centers. But here's the problem. He doesn't even say if any of them are even available to acquire in a trade. We don't know if they're on the market. He doesn't write, say, oh, sources indicate that the Lakers have reached out to these teams about these players. No, he just pulled 12 names out of his butt, splashed it on the internet. And finally, I might add, the first player that he lists as available that the Lakers might want to go after is Kyle Kuzma. Now, no disrespect to Kyle Kuzma, but if you remember, he didn't exactly blend in well with the Lakers when they had LeBron James and Anthony Davis as his teammates. Prior to Anthony Davis and LeBron James coming, Kuzma was great, but those teams for the Lakers were the hottest of garbage. Now that you have James and Davis, all of a sudden Kuzma can't find his spot. So is that really the top of the heap? Really? Fail by the LA Times. I've been trying to uh, discern how much of an impact all those, that dizzying wave of transfers Waves going out, waves coming back in around the USC basketball program has affected it. Because after all those names, and let's be real, there's hundreds of division one basketball schools. You can't possibly know everything about every player. So you're asking yourself, who makes the impact for the Trojans? Especially since USC returns just one player from last year. So what we do know is that Forward Desmond Claude, formerly of Xavier, appears to be the crown jewel of the recruiting class. This is according to CBSSports.com. He was Xavier's second leading scorer with 16.6 points per game. And yes, he can shoot from the outside, but on the defensive end, he's happy to go in the paint and get physical. It's a ranking of the top 80 transfer players in college basketball. That's where we glean this from CBS Sports. Claude, though, was just 19th. Forward St. Thomas, formerly of Northern Colorado, was ranked 39th. Now, as a point of reference, both of those players were ranked higher to CBS than Kobe Johnson, who transferred from USC to UCLA. 
But in the grand scheme of things, what does that tell us? It tells us we probably have two starting forwards that, the, that Mu Eric Musselman can rely on, but they don't have any centers. Nobody on the roster is taller than 6'8". They lack at playmaking guard. Basically, maybe they've improved it forward. That's what we know. Across the way at Heritage Hall, a couple of days ago, we were mentioning how six months away from, uh, we were six months away from National Signing Day in college football. Multiple people have told me recently that June is a surprisingly important month in football recruiting, which to be honest, surprises me a little, but that's okay. Because one of the things I've really enjoyed about this channel over the last couple of years is how I've learned how programs are built USC is scrambling, obviously, to become a big player in the Big Ten Conference. And that means that they, too, need to get bigger. CBSSports.com is reporting the Trojans are targeting Aaron Dunn, a four-star offensive tackle up in Utah. Dunn is the second highest rated high school football player in Utah, and he is the best offensive tackle on the west side of the country. Now, to be clear, if you are that high up on the scale, you have more than one suitor. UCLA, for example, they're also courting Dunn. The Trojans have also been trying to lure the best safety in the next high school football recruiting class. That's Trey McNutt. There is a caveat. The dude is from Cleveland. So obviously USC is in a battle with Ohio State. I have a correction to make, by the way, from yesterday's clip. Uh, I said Angel City FC was in New York to take on Gotham FC. That is not true. Women's professional soccer is on an international break. I made a mistake in reading the date. That match is actually for June 8th, to which all I can say is my bad. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Talk to me about, say, Clayton Kershaw and where you would slot him in the Dodgers rotation when he returns in a month. What do you think about the Lakers offseason, where the LA Times may have succeeded, where they darn sure failed? And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Cortel Queso production. Take care.